Hi, welcome to another edition of Ask Jeff. Ask Jeff is that moment where you get to ask whatever you want. And if it makes this program, that means we've chosen to answer your question on film. Um, if you ask a question, we always answer. And so it may come back via email. Uh, it may come back as a post that ends up on our Facebook page. And if you're not a part of our Facebook page, you want to join us there at the Church at 434. But then some of the questions, they kind of float to the top for whatever reason. And they become the Ask Jeff question. They can be serious. They can be funny. They can be asking a question about clarification of something in the Bible. They can be something just wild and off the wall. And whatever we feel so led to share was what this show ends up being. And so this is one that really is more of a Bible study question. And so here's the question. This verse from... John 3, 13 says, No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. And a sign? I don't get it. And if you think about it, it's an interesting verse. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. What does that verse mean? Because it sounds like that Jesus is the only one that's ever gone to heaven? Because Jesus is the one who's speaking here, it comes in that famous conversation at John 3 dialogue with Nicodemus when Nick comes at night to talk to Jesus. And so exactly what was he talking about? And it's somewhat difficult to interpret. And to be honest with you, it, it is very misunderstood. So the question wasn't a surprising question at all. As a matter of fact, it's been asked a number of times. So that's why we want to answer it here in this format. This is also one of those verses, just as a side note, that people will use when they want to critique and try to find contradictions in the Bible. Because what they'll say is, well, this says that no one's ever been to heaven except Jesus. No one can go there. He's the only one that's been there. But yet he says, believe me and go to heaven? Makes no sense. The Bible contradicts itself. And they say, aha, we've got you. And they got nothing. That's ridiculous. Because what this is, is a verse that you have to learn to keep in context. If you go back in verses 10 through 12, especially, we see Jesus is talking about his authority and the validity of his teaching. Jesus tells Nicodemus that he's been teaching what he knew firsthand. In verse 11, he says, We speak of what we know. We testify as to what we have seen. And then in verse 13, Jesus explains why he is uniquely qualified to teach about the kingdom of God, namely because he alone came down from heaven and possesses the knowledge to teach the people about heaven. Jesus alone has seen the Father, and he alone is qualified to declare God and make him known. So the gist of John 3.13 is this. None of your earthly teachers can really teach you much about heaven because none of them have been there. However, I've been there. In fact, it's my home. And I've come from my home in heaven, and I brought with me expert knowledge of that place. My testimony carries weight. I can tell you the truth about salvation. The New Living Testament brings out the meaning well. It says, no one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And by claiming his heavenly dwelling place, Jesus is making a huge statement because he's proclaiming his deity. Nicodemus has already admitted that Jesus was extraordinary. And he says, when you know, we know you're a teacher that's come from God. He says that in verse 2. And so Jesus is not teaching that no one has ever gone to heaven before. Obviously, Old Testament saints had gone to heaven or paradise when they died. Enoch and Elijah had been taken there without dying. But he was teaching that of all rabbis, Jesus had the best credentials because he had direct contact with the subject. He is an expert on heaven. And so to take it in just that one snapshot, sure, it can be a little confusing. But when you take verse 13 and drop it into the big structure of that conversation he has with Nicodemus, it begins to make sense. And so this is one of those times that you can't pull that verse out of context or you'll stumble over it. Take it, put it back where it belongs, look at the context, and see this is just a flow in the conversation where Jesus is sharing with a follower of His and a follower who had to struggle a bit to get there exactly why he could trust what Jesus was saying. This was pivotal for Nicodemus to become a follower of Christ. Pivotal. And it's pivotal for us as well. Because why would we trust someone who is talking about things that they had never experienced and couldn't know anything about?
you wouldn't trust me, to tell you what it was like to climb Mount Everest, because I've never been there. But yet I've seen the films of people who did it. I read the stories of those who have done it. I have read the firsthand accounts of those and the journals of those who have done it. So I have a feel of what it's like, but they would be the authorities, not me. And you can fill that in for any other area of your life. That's how you understand this context. So don't get it, you can get it. And you'll have fun when you do and post, so drop it back into the context. I think it's gonna be much better for you and it's gonna become crystal clear just like that. So thanks for the question. If you have one, don't be afraid to send it to us. Somehow, some way, you ask Jeff, you'll get an answer. <laughs> Who knows what that answer will be. I look forward to joining you again next time.